In the dawn of humanity's venture into the cosmos, before the establishment of the Imperium, our species embarked on an audacious odyssey across the celestial sea. Yet in their quest for dominion over these alien frontiers, they found themselves not conquerors, but supplicants, frail and unprepared for the formidable Xenos that dwelled in the vastness. Into this crucible of cosmic ambition, humanity forged the knights, marvels of ancient engineering, to stand as sentinels against the unknown. These titanic machines stood as towering monoliths on the field of battle, their silhouettes casting long shadows over the scarred landscapes of alien worlds. With limbs powered by arcane servo mechanisms, they could topple tanks and crush enemies into dust. Before the ascension of the Emperor and the conception of the Imperium, humanity, in its insatiable quest for expansion, cast its gaze upon the cosmos. These pioneers, armed with the dreams of a new beginning and the tools of terraformation, made landfall on alien worlds. At the dawn of this golden era, the Age of Technology, Terra's visionaries dispatched scouts across the galaxy, their mission to find new homes for humanity's overflowing populace and resources to fuel its relentless drive forward. These scouts laid the foundations of what would be known as the Night Worlds, bastions of humanity that predated the Imperium's glory by millennia. These worlds were chosen with care, selected for their potential to nourish humanity's swelling ranks or to offer up the precious ores needed for its engines of progress. Upon these distant planets, humanity's indomitable spirit was to be tested like never before. The fleets that carried these settlers were aptly named the Long March, a representation to both the journey's duration and its ambition. Upon reaching their destination, these ships, these carriers of future civilizations, were dismantled to provide the very foundations of the settlers' new homes. Yet the struggle for existence on these new frontiers was far from the dreams of those who set forth from terror. The settlers found themselves not as inheritors of empty realms, but as interlopers in lands that did not welcome them. On some worlds, ferocious predators lurked, viewing the newcomers as nothing more than their next meal. On others, native sentient species rose in arms, viewing the human settlers with enmity as invaders encroaching upon their ancestral homes. Amidst the unyielding wilderness of these newly claimed worlds, where the very air and fauna conspired against human survival, the seeds of solution had been sown. The settlers, far from being mere pioneers, were armed with the standard template construct databases of their homeland. These digital compendiums, repositories of ancient wisdom, held the blueprints for mankind's salvation powered suits of exo-armor. Forged in times of necessity, these constructs of plasteel and might emerged as the heralds of humanity's defiance against the alien landscapes that sought to repel them. The pilots, ensconced within their bipedal fortresses, were a fusion of flesh and unyielding plasteel, wielding weapons that could rend the earth and sky alike. The creatures that once preyed upon the settlers found themselves outmatched, their fangs and claws rendered obsolete against the technological marvels birthed from Terra's forgotten knowledge. The knights, as they came to be known, drew their name from the annals of Terran myth, warriors of honor and might, protectors of the realms of man. As time advanced, the initial design of the exosuits evolved. The stark lines of plasteel were gradually replaced by the lustrous sheen of adamantium, a material as enduring as the legends it was meant to embody. This transformation was not merely physical, it signified a shift in the knight's role within the burgeoning human societies. The armor became a mark of rank and prestige, a symbol of a noble's duty to protect and a testament to their prowess. Freed from the shackles of their former burdens, the tasks of resource gathering and construction fell to those of lesser station. This liberation allowed the knights to dedicate themselves to the mastery of martial disciplines and the intricacies of rulership. Their resolve to bring order to the chaos of these wild new worlds became the bedrock of their rule, giving birth to the knightly houses. Although vast swathes of the night worlds fell to the storm of death and destruction that defined the Age of Strife, some survived, aided considerably by the innate conservatism and resistance to change of the nightly houses. As the galaxy convulsed in its own agony, 
tearing itself apart with conflicts that seemed to know no end, the night worlds found themselves strangely untouched, spared from the direct onslaught that ravaged their brethren. This isolation, a byproduct of their obscurity and the tumult that distracted their potential aggressors, rendered them forgotten by the rest of humanity. Forgotten by the galaxy, the knightly houses of these worlds ruled. They fortified their dominions, their societies devolving under the unyielding grip of a warrior aristocracy. Under the watchful gaze of these metal titans, neo-feudal realms flourished, echoing the feudal laws of old Earth. Yet marked by the indelible influence of interstellar travel and the technology of a bygone golden age. As the Age of Strife waned, the ancient Mechanicum of Mars, in their quest for the lost technology, set forth into the void. Their starships traced the arteries of the old human dominions in search of the standard template construct technologies, the remnants of a pinnacle once reached and then lost by humankind. These explorers eventually stumbled upon the remnants of human civilization. Worlds that had once thrived under the banner of an interstellar humanity now lay in regression. Their societies devolved into feudal structures dominated by the knightly caste. These planets, now governed by the iron fists of warrior aristocracies, bore little resemblance to their former selves. Having devolved into pre-industrial societies, where the knightly codes of honor and valor dictated the rhythms of life. The societies that evolved were built upon concepts of fealty, honor, and duty. Three things that all knights held in the greatest regard. All nobles, or scions as they were sometimes known, on a knight world owed their allegiance to a knightly house, whose ruler could call upon them at any time to carry out his commands. Such calls were not solely for battle, they were the bonds connecting the community, from the deployment of men-at-arms, be they mounted knights or steadfast infantry, to the hallowed halls where artificers and technicians labored with a devotion to maintain. Yet the continuity of rule within these noble houses was a mix of ambition, valor, and at times, treachery. Leadership often passed from one generation to the next within the same lineage, but the death of a ruler could unfurl a banner of uncertainty heralding a time of outright conflict as contenders vied for the mantle of leadership. Consider the night world of Hygroxius, where the spectacle of the Honor Games sets the stage for a contest of prowess and strategy among the three major houses. Victorious in these trials, the winning house ascends to preside over the governing council, wielding authority over the planet's destiny for a decade. As centuries morphed into millennia, the night worlds turned ever more inward, their societies becoming mirrors reflecting a myriad of traditions. This divergence saw the emergence of unique titles and terms of respect and power. A ruler might be known as a lord on one world, a ritter or patriarch on another. As the veil of isolation was lifted from the night worlds by the Mechanicum, it became evident that the march of time had eroded much of their once glorious technological prowess. Settling amongst the age-old empires of nobility, the newcomers founded Forge Worlds. A symbiosis began to unfold between the tech priests and the knightly houses, a relationship founded on mutual need and respect. The Mechanicum delved into the secrets of the ancient ruins scattered across these worlds, unearthing remnants of technology long thought lost to the ravages of time, while the night worlds found in these enigmatic priests partners in commerce and knowledge. The knights, encased in their majestic suits of battle armor, became the sword arm of this burgeoning alliance. Their valor and prowess on the battlefield proved instrumental in quelling threats that lurked at the fringes of their domains. The marauding orcs and the Eldari Exodites, with their covetous eyes set upon the lands of the night worlds. In exchange for their martial might, the tech priests offered the knowledge and technology needed to maintain the nobles' suits of battle armor. Over the course of the Age of Strife, much of the expertise needed to keep the complex knight armor working had been lost. When the night worlds were rediscovered, most had only a handful of operational suits remaining, and even these were in a poor state of repair. The Mechanicum promised to remedy this situation by inducting the local technicians that had been caring for the armor into the cult Mechanicus, teaching them the skills they needed to keep the knight armor in good repair. Thus, 
Each suit of armor now carries the emblem of the Mechanicus, a silent testament to a debt owed to the Red Sands of Mars. The destinies of the Tech Priests and the Knights have become inextricably entwined, a dual helix of mutual dependence and shared prosperity. In a sweeping campaign to reunify humanity's dispersed worlds, the Emperor of Mankind dispatched his fleets across the galaxy, absorbing or destroying any who defied his sovereignty. Night worlds encountered along the way rapidly pledged their loyalty to the burgeoning Imperium, with noble houses committing their formidable might to the Emperor's cause, either directly or through fealty to his Primarchs and commanders. These knights, despite their occasionally difficult demeanor, become pivotal in cementing the Imperium's galactic dominance through their unmatched prowess in battle. However, some night worlds remained untouched and unseen by the Emperor's envoys, continuing to adhere to ancient customs and vigilantly guarding against celestial dangers yet to emerge. Within the ranks of the Imperial Knights, the Freeblades stand out as figures of intrigue and controversy. These knights, having broken ties with their native knightly houses for reasons ranging from a yearning for adventure or battle to being outcasts or the sole survivors of their lineage, swear fealty to no one. Often wandering the galaxy alone or leading a small cadre of loyal retainers, a significant number of these free blades were drawn to the Great Crusade, motivated by a hunger for renown or the constant call to arms. Fighting alongside the Questoris Crusade forces, they participated in numerous battles across various worlds, contributing to the Emperor's expansive endeavors. The total count of free blades remains a mystery, but it is speculated to reach into the tens of thousands, their elusive nature making them difficult to catalogue. Across the galaxy, thousands of nighthouses pledge their allegiance to either Terra or the Adeptus Mechanicus, governing their night worlds through a rigorous feudal system. Nobles from these houses pilot the formidable night suits into battle, a privilege earned through the arduous ritual of becoming. Those houses loyal to Terra organize under a high monarch, with barons managing territories of varying sizes and ranks directly below them. Similarly, night houses aligned with the Adeptus Mechanicus often join the Collegia Titanica in combat or protect vital forge worlds led by a princeps and supported by barons with distinct titles, mirroring the hierarchical structure of their terror-sworn counterparts. Within the stratified society of night worlds, a distinct subclass known as the Drovers plays a crucial role, tending to the animal herds essential to their lords, but beneath the nobility's dignity to manage directly. These Drovers operate mech walkers akin to those of their noble masters, yet, by strict legal mandate, their machines are unarmed, leaving them vulnerable to predators and hostile Xenos incursions. This vulnerability ensures the Drovers' dependence on the Knights for protection, cementing a system that discourages rebellion by rendering any thought of insurrection impracticable, thus maintaining the nobles' unchallenged authority. When the clarion call of battle resounds across the lands, each noble house stirs from its slumber. A single knight stands as a bastion against the tide, capable of thwarting the onslaught of Xenos raiders or quelling the fury of wild beasts with a mere flick of its weapons. But when the shadows of looming peril cast their veil upon the realm, it is not just a single knight that marches forth, but whole legions of these mechanical behemoths. Their procession strikes awe into the hearts of allies and adversaries alike, for it heralds the might of a united force, unyielding in its determination and formidable in its strength. When the High King of a Night World decrees the call to arms, his vassal houses, bound by oath and allegiance, heed the summons without hesitation. To defy such a decree is to court not only disgrace, but eternal infamy, a stain upon the honor of a house that no amount of valorous deeds can wash away. Rare indeed are the days when a knight, sworn to uphold the sacred vows of chivalry, turns a deaf ear to the call of duty. The legacy of their forebears and the destiny of their progeny, there lies a solemn truth, that the honor of a knight is measured not by the battles they win, but by the unwavering resolve with which they answer the summons of war. 
Beyond the defense of their home, a high king can muster his detachments of knights to take part in off-world campaigns. These off-world campaigns, orchestrated at the behest of the Imperium, often find the High King's knights embroiled in the bloody conflicts that define the fate of entire star systems. Whether at the command of a Lord Commander of the Astra Militarum or a Space Marine Chapter Master, they heed the call, their noble steeds thundering across the stars to meet the enemy head on. Yet not all battles are waged at the behest of distant masters. For the slightest affront, the merest hint of dishonor, is enough to rouse the High King's wrath. Thus, when a knight's honor is besmirched, when the stain of shame tarnishes their name, they embark on a quest for vengeance that spans the breadth of the galaxy. This concludes today's chapter from the archives. Please like and subscribe if you want more. Leave a comment on which chapter we should reveal from the archives next. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider making a purchase of mini block figurines from my shop linked below.